Hello, and welcome to Email Forensics. My name is Michael Iwanowicz, and I am going to present uh, some information about how uh, email works between clients and servers, uh, some information on headers, and a little bit of information on spoofing, and uh, various other things relating to the structure and forensics in uh, when it comes to email. So the first thing that we'll go over is uh, various clients and servers. Um, and the, the important thing to, to go with first is, is servers. Uh, servers are responsible for moving and storing uh, email messages. Uh, the server primarily tasked with moving email is the SMTP server. Uh, this is the workhorse of email. It is responsible for moving uh, any email from point A to point B. Uh, POP and IMAP servers are also important. Uh, they are mostly there to manage mailboxes. So um, when you connect to send email, it's via an SMTP server. When you connect to retrieve email, it is either a POP or IMAP server. Now, POP and IMAP servers are essentially the same thing, or, or they do the same thing. But one is more robust. IMAP is, is uh, newer and more advanced than POP. Uh, POP is very old and uh, lacks some of the functionality that I, uh, IMAP has. As far as clients go, they are responsible for uh, being the originator and the endpoint of email. Uh, there are a lot of different email clients um, that I'm sure you're familiar with. But uh, we'll focus a little bit on Outlook Express because it's, it's very available to anyone who has a Windows PC. Um, it comes with Internet Explorer. Uh, and we'll also take a look at Thunderbird a little bit. Uh, Thunderbird is a free open source alternative uh, email client. It's, uh, it's made by the same people who do Mozilla Firefox. Uh, so I picked that one because uh, uh, Firefox is becoming very popular these days, and uh, Thunderbird is, is gaining a little bit of traction as well. There are a lot of other ones. Uh, some of the other ones that are very popular are Outlook. Uh, that comes with Microsoft Office. Uh, Evolution is a pretty popular um, Linux-based uh, open source email client. Uh, so if you have a, a GUI in, uh, in Linux, uh, you might use that. Eudora is a very old uh, email client. Uh, it's, it's pretty popular. Um, it's recently uh, become free and ad-supported. Um, so that's, that's another one that's very available. I want to touch briefly on webmail as well. Um, Web-based email has become a lot more popular uh, recently. Um, Probably just about everyone has a Gmail or Yahoo account. Uh, the issues relating to web-based email are really best left up to uh, web browsing forensics. Uh, a lot of the issues are the same things, who went where. Uh, that's really something that you, you uh, can, can get uh, in the same way that you, you get that information for any website. But uh, an important thing to recognize is that all of these email clients mentioned here, and, and very probably all email clients, uh, web-based, that is, uh, the full headers are available. So when we're going over the headers uh, later in this presentation, um, you'll be able to get the same information off of a web-based email client uh, as you do off of a normal client. It's, uh, it's the same headers, and, and therefore, it's the same information. So the first server that we'll look at is, uh, again, the main server associated with email delivery on the Internet. Uh, the SMTP server is the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Uh, it's one of the oldest protocols online, and therefore, it's very mature. It doesn't change a whole lot. Uh, it has its roots in some older protocols, but in 1982, they, they put RFC 821 uh, down as the original SMTP standard. So um, it hasn't 
really had a whole heap of devel development since then. It's it's largely stayed on the same track. Um, SMTP is a push protocol. Now, what this means is, uh, if you if you relate it to the way that that you transfer a file online, uh, every time we submit our exercises to the uh, to URI, we upload a file onto their server. Now, this is uh, a secure FTP server, but it's it's the same sort of concept. Basically, what we're doing is we're connecting to the server, and we're handing off the file. We're uploading it. And that's what SMTP does. SMTP finds the uh, the server and uh, pushes the, the the email onto that server. So more specifically, um, every email client needs an SMTP server associated with it. When you set up your SMT or uh, rather your email client and it asks you for what your SMTP server is, uh, that's when you, you decide uh, where it's going to be, if it's through your uh, web host or if it's through um, the convenience uh, uh, server at Gmail. Um, anything uh, that, that you put in as the SMTP server, that's the server it's going to statically associate with. So um, when you send an email, your client will connect to the SMTP server, and it usually connects on port 25. And uh, when when they connect and they're talking, the client uploads the email. Uh, everything, including the from, the to, and the body of the message, goes onto that server. Uh, so the, that SMTP server then takes the message, uh, parses out the to line, and uh, then uh, taking it and knowing knowing the format, the traditional format for email addresses, it's able to direct the, the uh, email message. So this example, John Doe at Yahoo.com, uh, the SMTP server recognizes John Doe is the mailbox and that Yahoo.com is the domain. So at this point, the SMTP server uh, recognizes the domain um, and uh, it knows that it isn't yahoo.com. Uh, we'll say it's comcast.net. Uh, so the SMTP server will check yahoo.com uh, just like anything else on the internet uh, against a DNS and the DNS will tell it the IP address for that uh, that domain name, and so the, the SMTP server then connects to the remote uh, Yahoo um, uh, SMTP server again on port 25 and pretty much in exactly the same way as the client connected to the first, uh, the first SMTP server, although this is, this is being done dynamically uh, where the client uh, software was was statically set up to communicate with with the first SMTP server whenever it had to send mail. So once the SMTP server hands off the message to the new SMTP server, uh, we're assuming it's one hop in this example. So the mail is at yahoo.com. Uh, yahoo.com recognizes that it is uh, at the domain. Uh, so the SMTP server recognizes at this point that it, it doesn't have to send the message to another SMTP server and it's at this point that uh, that it hands the email off to the mailbox uh, managing server which is either a POP or IMAP server. So what is POP? POP is the post office protocol. Uh, it is the most popular protocol used to deliver messages from a mail server, which which basically means um, you are connecting to a POP server. This POP server takes the mail from the SMTP server and directs it to the appropriate mail file. Uh, when you connect to the POP server, it will offload that mail file to, to your client uh, software. Uh, 